Welcome to P. Clark Calc, Practical Calculus for the Busy Math Student. And in this video, we're going to take a look at an example of integration by parts. This one involves an algebraic and a log factor in the same integrand. Here we're taking a look at the integral x to the third times natural log of x dx. And when you play around with it a little bit, you find out that the only way it's really going to get done is a technique known as integration by parts. And integration by parts is the product rule for integration. If you take the product rule for derivatives and integrate with respect to x, you can prove this rule to yourself, but you need to know it. And it states that the integral of two factors, we call one u and the other one dv, is always equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. So, so when we use integration by parts, we need to make two decisions here. Uh, what, is the, what is the factor we're going to call u, and then what is the factor we're going to call dv? Now the guidelines are that u is a factor that becomes simpler when we take the derivative. And in, in this case, when we have uh, an algebraic factor and a natural log, the u factor is always the log. Both derivatives are, are simpler. But however, the, the derivative of a log does not have a, a log in it. The derivative of a natural log is 1 over x. So, so the rule of thumb there is to always let u be the log. So we're not integrating the natural log, which gets more difficult, not, not easier. So that means that the rest of the integrand has to be dv, and we include the differential dx into that. The guidelines for choosing dv state that we want the factor that has the most difficult but elementary integration rule. And so in this case, it's going to be the, the polynomial or the algebraic factor, which is going to go by power rule. The integral natural log is not an elementary rule. It's actually proven itself by parts, and it's much more difficult. So we're not going to use that one here. So in this case, u is the log, and then dv is your algebraic factor. So that means then we're looking at u being equal to our natural log and dv being the algebraic factor. And dx is always included in dv because we do need that in order to do the integral. So we do then what I like to call the little calculus where we do the differential of the natural log, which you probably know is 1 over x dx. And then v, we integrate x to the third by power rule, and that gives us 1 fourth x to the fourth. The plus c is omitted here, because if you look on the, the right-hand side when we do integration by parts, this integral of v times du needs to be integrated itself, hopefully. And the plus c will all be combined at the end. So we don't worry about that when we're doing our scratch work here on this little calculus. So so now we can go ahead and apply the rule itself. And you do eventually need to have this memorized. And so it states that our antiderivative is u times v, which would be on our diagonal here. So that's 1 fourth x to the fourth times the natural log. We tend to write the algebraic factor first. Minus the integral of v times du. Now if we just write it out that way for this example, v is 1 fourth x to the fourth, and du is 1 over x times dx. So in the case with the natural log involved in your integration by parts, there's some algebraic simplification that needs to occur here, uh, the x to the fourth times 1 over x. The other thing that we usually do is not include the constant multiple inside of the integral. It almost never helps there. So, so we're going to do a bit of algebra here, and we're also going to take that 1 fourth factor and put it out in front of our new integral of v times du. So that gives us 1 fourth x to the fourth natural log minus 1 fourth times the integral of x to the third dx. So whatever case you're doing integration by parts for, um, what you want to do after the first try, after the first run through it, is to look at this integral v times du and say, well, is, is that moving me in the right direction? Is this integral easier than the one that we started out with? And in this case, we'd say sure, because it doesn't have a natural log in it. So, so that's a good thing for most people. So 
We also have what I would call the terminal case here. So we just go ahead and use a power rule for that, and then we'll be done. So the antiderivative then, final form, is 1 fourth x to the fourth natural log x minus 1 sixteenth times x to the fourth. And then we remember to put our plus c here at the end. And that's our integral. So it's a common case of integration by parts. We see it in these cases where you have two pretty different factors in the integrand and there's no good u substitution options. So things like polynomial log or polynomial exponential or maybe polynomial with a sine or cosine, those are all common cases for this technique. If you'd like to learn more about integration by parts or calculus in general, you can find those in my calculus books, which are available on Amazon for a really nice price. Until next time, I'm P. Clark.